France attack, three killed in Islamic terrorist stabbings. French President Emmanuel Macron said that France would not surrender its core values. Canada's federal Liberal government witnessed a drop in support during by-elections in two of Liberal strongholds. America inches closer to election day, but results remain unpredictable. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo signs a military agreement in India and pays homage to the 20 fallen Indian soldiers. Pakistan remains on the gray list of a global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog. COVID cases continue to climb around the world. Indian Dispora in Toronto staged a protest outside Pakistan consulate to mark Black Day of Pakistan's invasion of Jammu and Kashmir. Three people have died in a knife attack at the church in Nice, in which French President Emmanuel Macron said was an Islamic terrorist attack. Le visage de la République, de notre volonté de briser les terroristes, de réduire les islamistes. He said that France would not surrender its core values after visiting the Notre Dame Basilica in the southern city. An extra 4,000 troops are being deployed to protect the churches and schools. In Nice, one elderly victim was virtually beheaded, officials said, after a woman and man also died. Anti-terror prosecutors have opened an investigation into the attack and France has raised its national security alert to its highest level. Police sources named a suspect as Brahim Ayusai, a 21-year-old Tunisian man who arrived by boat on an Italian island of Lampedusa in September. He was placed in the coronavirus quarantine there before being released and told to leave Italy. He arrived in France earlier this month. Nice Mayor Christian Estrosi spoke of Islamofascism and said that the suspect had repeated endlessly, Allah Akbar, God is greatest. President Macron's resolve comes after a history teacher, Samuel Paddy, was beheaded on the 16th of October by an 18-year-old, Abdullah Anzrov, outside Paris for showing cartoons of Prophet Muhammad during a class about freedom of speech. La nation tout entière se tient. President Erdogan has called on Turkish people to boycott French goods and urge world leaders to protect Muslims. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has also accused French president of attacking Islam while French products have been removed from shops in Kuwait, Jordan and Qatar. There have been protests in Bangladesh, Iraq, Libya and Syria. On the other hand, European leaders are coming out in support of France. Leaders of Germany, Netherlands, Italy have expressed solidarity with the President Macron. The French government has announced more than 120 searches of individual homes, with plans to target terrorism funding, increasing pressure on social media companies to police content effectively, and breaking down on associations accused of spreading hate. <laughs> The federal Liberals saw their share of the vote drop in two Toronto by-elections earlier this week. In a tough race, the party ultimately hung on to Toronto Centre, where former news broadcaster Marcy Ian surpassed a strong showing by newly minted Green Party leader Anna May Paul. Liberals also hung on to York Centre after nerve-wracking hours in which the lead repeatedly switched between the Liberals and the Conservatives, before Yara Sachs finally pulled ahead with just over 700 votes. Following the election results, Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole tweeted, These results in two of the safest Liberal seats in the country show Canadians are losing faith in Justin Trudeau. During last year's general election, the Liberals took Toronto Centre with over 57% of the vote and York Centre with just over 50%. Just a year later, Marcian took 42% of the Toronto Centre vote, a 15-point drop from the results garnered last fall by former Finance Minister Bill Marneau, who resigned abruptly in August amid reports of tensions with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau over a massive spending on pandemic relief measures and the fallout from the We Charity scandal. The new Liberal MP for York Centre, meanwhile, garnered 46% of the vote, a drop of about four points from the last elections. The seat in this riding was left vacant last month after Liberal MP Michael Levette resigned to become president and CEO of the Canadian Friends of Wiesenthal Centre for Holocaust Studies. 
Next week on November 3rd, America will decide whether President Donald Trump remains in the White House for another four years. The Republican leader is being challenged by Democratic Party nominee Joe Biden, former President Barack Obama's vice president. Biden is leading President Trump by nine percentage points in the polls. According to Ipsos, when surveyed between October 16th and the 20th, 51 percent of respondents said they're either voting or will vote for Biden, while 42 percent back Trump. Economy, jobs, health care and coronavirus remain the biggest problems facing the country at this time. More than 61 percent of one million Americans have already voted in person or by mail. A pace of early voting that could lead to the highest turnout in more than a century. Earlier this week, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo signed a military agreement in India while on his multi-country tour aimed at pushing the Trump administration's anti-China message. Pompeo was joined by U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper to sign a pact with their Indian counterparts that allow both countries to share sensitive satellite data, often used to steer missiles and drones. Pompeo and Esper also met with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to discuss COVID-19 response, security and defense cooperation, along with an interest in free and open Indo-Pacific. The two U.S. officials also laid a reef at the war memorial in New Delhi while remembering the 20 Indian soldiers killed this summer while combating Chinese soldiers during a border dispute. Pakistan remains on the gray list of Financial Action Task Force, a global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog. Failing to suffice all of 27 mandated action points, Pakistan will face international constraints on its markets and its ability to produce loans until the next FATF review in February 2021. The remaining six tasks consist of taking action against terrorists and terror groups banned by the United Nations Security Council, eradicating charitable organizations linked to the banned entities, cracking down on channels of terror financing through narcotics and smuggling, while also tracing and convicting fugitive terrorism. In a 39-member FATF, Turkey remained the only country to push for Pakistan to be let off. While even the traditional backers of Pakistan, such as China, Saudi Arabia and Malaysia, deferred from extending their support. According to the data maintained by U.S.-based John Hopkins University, COVID-19 cases stand at more than 44 million worldwide. While 29.8 million have been resolved, the death reports stand at more than 1.1 million globally. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa is in quarantine after coming in contact with a guest at a 35-person fundraising dinner in Johannesburg, who later tested positive. The Philippines closed cemeteries and memorial parks this week to prevent an annual influx of millions of Filipinos on All Saints Day. Authorities in Sri Lanka also closed several museums as a new wave of coronavirus is being detected in different parts of the country. In the Middle East, Iranian government said people are being too lax in complying with the restrictions as the country faces record levels of infections and deaths. Indian diaspora in Toronto staged a protest outside Pakistan consulate to mark Black Day of Pakistan's invasion of Jammu and Kashmir. On October 22nd, Pakistan's army and its tribal forces led by Pakistani army invaded into Kashmir, a peaceful Kashmir where there is no provocation against the Pakistani state and its people, a protester said. The tribal militia committed genocide and raped women and plundered the peaceful land of Kashmir. दोस्तों आज हम यहाँ पे जमा हुए हैं 22 अक्टूबर 1947 को जब पाकिस्तान ने कबायली लड़ाकों के साथ मिलकर कश्मीर पर हमला कर दिया था और हजारों की तादाद में हमारे हिंदू और सिखों के नाम कत्ले आम हुआ हजारों औरतों की आंखों लूटी गई। We are gathered here to protest against the genocide. Committed upon the people of Kashmir in 1947 by the terrorist state of Pakistan, 
on October 22nd, 1947, Pakistan Army, its intelligence agencies, organized a tribal force led by a Pakistani major that invaded into Kashmir, a peaceful Kashmir where there was no provocation at all. There was no provocation against Pakistani state or its people. That peaceful Kashmir was invaded by Pakistan army, led by Pakistan army. The tribal militia committed genocide, raped women and plundered the peaceful land of Kashmir. My name is Sukha, so I'm here to support uh, this movement. I think uh, we should all come out and uh, unite and uh, raise our voices. Aaj, so we October ko Toronto mein consulate ke samne humne protest kiya. Pe isliye protest kiya ki Pakistan sarkar ko pata lage ki dashar kar diye terrorism is not tolerable. My name is Anak. I came here today to support my fellow Indian friends for an injustice that they have faced for a very long time. Myself being from a different country, I had no idea that there was such a genocide that happened in Kashmir. We have done this in Hindu Forum Canada so that we want to make the whole world of Pakistan and terrorism in the world. We are doing this protest from Hindu Forum Canada against the 22 October 1947, the protest was arranged by Hindu Forum Canada and Indo-Canadian Kashmir Forum. France attack, three killed in Islamic terrorist stabbings. French President Emmanuel Macron said that France would not surrender its core values. Canada's federal Liberal government witnessed a drop in support during by-elections in two of Liberal strongholds. America inches closer to election day, but results remain unpredictable. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo signs a military agreement in India and pays homage to the 20 fallen Indian soldiers. Pakistan remains on the gray list of a global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog. COVID cases continue to climb around the world. Indian diaspora in Toronto stage a protest outside Pakistan consulate to mark Black Day of Pakistan's invasion of Jammu and Kashmir.